Welcome to the map Randy Hills in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 for a replay commentary in a one on one matchup between two really strong and great players. On the bottom side of the map, we have the green Isengard player Eoma, and his opponent is the yellow Rohan player Nero. I mean, his name is Eoma, but yet he decides to play um, Isengard. I think he's pretty, you know, of course, he was picking random. But maybe it's the Grima Warntong that was able to convince Eoma that something he could not do in the films, but was capable of doing in the game. The Uruks are looking to find those sneaky little peasants and the sneaky little Hobbit. But I think they will manage to get to the spot. And maybe Hobbit can cloak here. And that's exactly what's about to happen. There comes the Warchant. But that's still a great situation for Rohan because even after dealing with those peasants, the Uruks cannot capture this settlement, which has been, uh, you know, avoided by this little Hobbit Mary. And this Uruk is going to lead forward to attack this settlement over there. So we will eventually get to see some peasants, but even then, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you cannot win. Swartman against Swartman, always bet your money on the Uruks. So your goal is and your advantage is to outnumber your opponent and fight against them when you know the Vorchan is not available on his units anymore. And even then you need to outnumber him big time. One peasant was able to sneak through, but it's a, you know, one peasant, he cannot achieve too much. And it will go down. Good looking beast for Aizen, double furnace into the Uruk pit. I mean, of course, Uruk pit furnace into the second furnace, that's the build order. Against good factions like Gondor or Rohan in a one-on-one -on -one situation, when you play Aizen, you always want to open with a Uruk pit. And prefer, you know, you prefer to open also with a furnace at the same time. So they will get the chance to commit on this uh, furnace. Unfortunately for them, that's not a slaughterhouse, that's a bit more tankier structure. So you cannot burst it down and it will be protected at least for now. Stable, fully built up though, the first Rohirrim warrior is gonna join that field of battle very very soon. Will he decide to defend himself against those Uruks or will he go forward? Because the Uruk pit just got level 2 and the first pikeman is going to be there very very soon as well. So he's gonna go for the creep with the Warchan number 2. That's the plan of Aizen. Easy creeping for the Uruks, no problemo. And also this farm is gonna go down. Rohirrim won't make it in time. And that's that's a big ouchie there for Rohan. Now losing this level 2 farm outside, which potentially got a lot of experience, was close to hit level 3. Has to be now replaced. That's another 200 investment you could save for potentially one more farm inside your base. But it is what it is, you know? Hobbit was able to sneak through. Mary, can he do it? No, they are bringing the Hobbits to Isengard. Oh, he, he will demolish it because one more. I mean, this guy was obsessed by this. He was like, okay, you know what? No matter what's gonna happen, I will take that furnace down. And you cannot stop a man with a plan. You cannot stop a man who has a plan in his mind, bro. That's not gonna be possible. The Rohirrim are gonna make it to the Slumber Mill, which has been just recently built up, and it will be demolished. When you demolish it, you will deny your opponent the power points experience for the units, but also you will get half of the money back. It's always a winning situation. The level two peasants will commit to the slaughterhouse. It's gonna go down. I mean, that's a super delayed distraction of this, but it's totally fine and worth it. Also, this Lumber Mill is gonna go down. Now, the mid game, as expected, Rohan is super strong with the early horses and the mobility advantage you got over your opponent and the chance that you can just simply recruit peasants to counter enemy pikemen. You are putting yourself in a very great situation. Level 3 peasants are gonna hit like an absolute track shredder through this pikemen and gather power points like crazy. One and a half power points collected. He's gonna get even more after creeping this goblin layer with the other Rohirrim. And of course, as expected, we will get to see more peasants. So Aizen has to be always paying attention to his pikemen to not feed more power points. Um, creeping, we have still two troll layers up on the field on each side, protecting these two outposts. And Rohan can creep that with two Rohirrim warriors. One of them has to do the job of being the beat, you know, lure the troll away from his lair. And the second Rohirrim will take down the home of the troll. That's how you do it. Okay, what is the plan of Rohan? He has three Rohirrim. We'll go for the Rohirrim numero four. 
um, which will also level up the stable to level 2, enables the horse shields. Oh, the Berserker is gonna hit different though. The Warchan is gonna be used. He's trying to micro with the Berserker to protect him against the Rohirrim warriors. And the Berserker was saved, and the peasants have been entirely taken down. But in the meantime, never mind, Isengard is paying attention to everything. That's great. Armory now building up for Rohan. He still needs three quarters of a power point to unlock his elves, which would be amazing if he can do that a bit earlier. But the remaining, or the missing power points rather, could be collected by doing exactly what I was mentioning before. So use the horses to beat the troll out of his lair. And now this Rohirrim can um, take him down. And once you deal with this lair, this troll will infinitely focus you down. But then you can just run into your base. Your Tita is able to shoot in 2.22. We have Lourdes now on the field. And like mentioned before, the troll is on the hunt. This Rohirrim destroyed my home. I will slay them all. But luckily the Tzita, the my golden hole of Rohan, will protect the Rohirrim warriors. Talking about the golden hole, we will also have Theodin up on the field. If we can get the last city on this troll, that would be even amazing. Can he get the last hit though? Oh, he got the last hit. That's even better, bro. Level 2, rank 2, and another troll. It's a troll party in the home of Rohan. Fighting around the well is always great. Ooh, what a find it by the troll. Oh my god, the troll doesn't want to joke around anymore. Oof, if, imagine Thurin dying here. Oh, he could not get experience for this troll, though. It would bring him... Maybe it would even unlock the rank 3 right off the bat. But it was also, you know, drawing lots of attention from the Rohan player. He needed to pay attention for his Rohirrim to not lose a whole battalion. I mean, he will keep spamming peasants, just why not? If you lose them, of course, it's, it's, it can be better, but, you know, you will lose only 120, which is affordable in the mid-game. And gives you or give, puts pressure on Aizen and will force him to go for the Vork Riders later on or maybe Sharku or keep getting more Berserkers for the map control. So, we have seen the Palantir, Lourdes, level 3, has a cripple on cooldown, it means Theodin can do what, what he wants to do. Spear shall be shaken, shields shall be splintered. Now he has one power point also for the heal. Ooh, beautiful punishment with trampling into the pikemen without the formation. Now you want to put Theodin next to the elves, that's exactly what he's doing. And... That's gonna be enough. But the problem is, this Rohirrim is taking a lot of damage now. He needs to be sent back to the base for the recovery. He has only one healthy upgrade Rohirrim. The other one has not even upgraded yet. Does he have the shields? Nope, but he's about to get them. Sharku looking for a trample. But the elves with the leadership of Theodin are gonna also hurt even Sharku. Lourdes farming experience points by killing those peasants. But Rohan is still this map control, and you can see the importance of the Vork Pit in this matchup when you play Aizen against a good Rohan who will keep spamming uh, peasants over and over again. Your Berserkers might get outskilled at some point because he can just simply give them Forge Blades and Heavy Armor, and then they will be able to match the strength of your Berserkers. Um, the Elves are still slaughtering, by the way. It's great. But Sharku putting pressure. Okay, so Palantir has been used. Lourdes is on a mission, but he will not be able to cripple Theodin, who is far away. He's way too fast. And the cripple will be missed now on the King of Rohan. It means it's going to be on cooldown for the next minute and a half. Right? What is the cooldown? Minute and 15 seconds, sorry. Archer range building up for the fire arrows. He has all the upgrades from his armory, but I'm assuming he lost one of the Rohirrim warriors before. No, he didn't. He is actually still having them and fighting against pikemen. That's very great. I mean, Aizen loses the map control, but to be honest, that's also kind of expected. Mm, the durability of the beast is going to be super high, though, because the only furnace he was able to destroy with the Rohirrim was the one in the front. But all the ones behind are about to hit level 3 or are, are already level 3. Again, that will make them super tanky. Shark has to be careful. And um, Rohirrim with upgrades are definitely... 
uh, you know, not something to be joked with. Yodin is level 3, so they're rank 3. Only one more rank required for the rank 4, Glorious Charge. Archer range will hit level 2 after this Yeoman Archer. And he went for Saruman instead of going for the upgrades. The Saruman is also a great defender of the Isengard Castle. He has a great arsenal of powers, you know, his fireball especially. Ew, what a bad trample. Oh my goodness, what a fine hit. What a fine monster hit. Kyojin is keeping his distance always from the pikeman. He doesn't want to be slaughtered. He's super squishy hero, by the way. He has only 1000 HP. And also his armor is not the greatest against um, pikeman when he's mounted. Mm. The problem is going to be the leadership, because this Lourdes was able to get a lot of experience. He's all about to hit rank 4. It means he needs only one more rank to get to unlock his leadership. Ooh, bad trample. I think he was not paying attention to them. Maybe paying attention to Sharku, who's just trampling peasants over there, you know. But he's going to be caught and taken down. Do not touch the peasants of Theodin King. Sharku will pay for this mistake with his life but he will be revived he's only level 3 only 1 minute and 30 seconds will be needed to get him back on the menu okay so fire rose purchase we will so soon see rohirrim archers and it will kind of shut down the ability from aizen to keep sending pikemen all over all over the map if you keep sending pikemen over the oh theodin took a lot of damage from the porcupine formation pikemen there comes the war chant and theodin is dead that's what it is he's dead I mean, Theodin is, a, is one, potentially one of the most cost-efficient heroes, and his downside is, of course, that he's weak, that he doesn't deal the greatest amount of damage, that he's not the greatest tank of all time, that he's squishy, but for that reason, he only costs 1300. You know, it's like the hero which gives you leadership right off the bat without you having to invest any time into him. And every hero should have his downside. Either they need to be expensive and not obvious weaknesses, or they need to be cheap, but then they need to be squishy and also weak men men are weak as elrond would like to say nice catch actually i like it Ooh, i liked it even more the fireball from downtown sharku is level 3 has the leadership for his war carders which he doesn't have unfortunately and the power spike we are looking for is the level 6 it will make him to a dual monster. And that's the strength of Aizen, right? Oh, that's going to be a beast rush. Coming from multiple Rohirrim. They will get the chance now to commit to the armory. Palanti is going to be used for the movement speed boost. But the armory is going to be taken down because the Rohirrim are hitting very, very hard. The Warm Tone ability will be cancelled because he knew he would miss it. But they are running into the pikemen. So lucky the one is going to be surviving. Can Lourdes finish him off? No, he can't. And the Rohirrim will make it home safe. And he will keep rushing over and over again, but the longer he waits with the rush, the more durable the Isengard beast will become. Something you need to keep please in mind. Now, there are not only the sentry towers, there are also these th 3 level 3 furnace towers. The only difference is, the sentry tower has 1000 HP, and the furnace level 3 has 5500 HP, you know? Like, as tanky as five and a half sentry towers. Just in case you don't know math. You know what I'm saying? But you got me. You got me. I will teach you anything. Everything. Warchan is going to be used on this pikeman. Rohirrim have to be careful. Palantir is on cooldown. And, you know, that's okay. You beat him to use Warchan. And then, ooh, Theodin King stands alone. He will steal one of them, or actually two of them. That's great. And you see, Theodin will be dead, of course. Ooh, even a Rohirrim archer has been killed. In the meantime, he's going for the rush, committing with a lot of Rohirrim, but also will lose them without taking down the armory. Now the Rohirrim archer under control from Aizen for now, but it's going to be changed. Can they get away? They cost a lot of money. One of them is going to be... Actually, both of them are going to be able to survive that. That's super important. There comes the Palantir, and Charku is like, No, you will not get away from me. Them out. 
Okay, you will get away from me, but only this one last time. <laughs> Saruman is level 6. That's great. Lourdes, I'm assuming, is also close to level 5. Yeah, super close to level 5. Charku, level 4. Armory level 3. Uh, I mean, Furnace level 3. He purchased Fire Arrows, Heavy Armor, Benham, and also the Forge Bleeds. Now he can demolish the Armory because he doesn't need it anymore. Mm, Rohirrim Archers are extremely strong units, potentially the highest DPS because the amount of leadership you can get with them is kind of immense too. Uh, be careful there. Um, they have a couple of downsides though. They need leadership and levels to get their final strong form. And with leadership, I'm not talking only about Theodine. That's not going to be enough. Oof, doesn't demolish it. That's not great. Land will be used. Isengard could be able to cover this. He chooses to not to because he is going for the ring. Trample, beautiful trample from behind. But they have lots of leadership from the Saruman armor. That's why the crossbowmen are not getting one-shotted. And also, when you combine stuff, in this case, when you cover your mouse over the guy, you can see the combo bonus is coming in clutch, you know? Okay, so fireball and put theory next uh, Saruman uh, Lourdes next to him and this way Lourdes was able to get experience that's great and what I was trying to say before is Rohan uh, Rohir marches they are expensive and they also need levels slash leadership to be strong then they will get to the point in which they can one shot all the heroes Saruman Lourdes they cannot get anywhere close to them however they need the leadership and the leadership I'm talking about is either Aragorn or additional leadership, or you need to get Eoma and level him up to level 4. Eoma's leadership is the biggest leadership when it comes to the raw damage power, and that's all these Rohirrim Arches really need. They need to raw damage, they need to burst you before they get bursted. Because one of their weaknesses is the lack of durability. They are super squishy, they die in a second, so you can't survive, you can't sustain, so you need to kill them before they kill you. you know, that's like how Rohirrim Arches work. And of course, you are also mobile. So I would like to call them Rangers on Horses, you know. That's how strong they are. There comes the Palantir Warchant. And also, Rin is available. Will he use it? Yes, he will use it. Now you need to give up this outpost. You cannot fight for this anymore. Because he also has no more land. It's on cooldown. And you want to make sure to demolish the structures in time. That's also super important. But Rohan might use the momentum to go to the base of Aizen and rush him instead. Rain is active though for a couple of minutes. However, the beast is now super durable. Can Theoden get the experience he desires for the rank 4? Can he unlock the glorious charge in this game? That comes the big heal. And he will go for a juicy tramp trample. However, the Rohirrim Archer trample damage is definitely lower compared to the normal Rohirrim damage when they trample. And Eoma is I mean, Theoden is super close to level 4. Rohan is not super rich though. Isengard went for the devastation and also for the industry. The evil factions are not about, um, you know, reinforcement summon. They are much more about, ooh, catch, 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 catch. Beautiful catch. But the pikemen. I think the Isengard player didn't even pay attention to that. He was just walking. He didn't even try to fight back, bro. But if you run into a pikeman like that, uh, what can I say? These two wizards are gonna be super dangerous. I mean, the wizard and his servant. And we have 11 and a half power points collected, by the way, for Aizen. That's really impressive. He's getting surprisingly close to the to the Balrog summon. Maybe he's counting on it because he doesn't go for any siege weapons. And you need siege weapons to break through the wall and the gate from your Gondor or Rohan opponent. And the ends are going to war. He's going to use the Palantir, but the Ains are not going to be able to catch up to these units. He's going to use land. But the wizard and his servant are coming. Wizard must pay. Ooh, fireball. I think he was trying to rush the beast, but you see, he has army in the beast. That's also very important and smart. You can never, and you should never leave your beast completely unprotected, by the way. Theoden is back on the menu, boys. He was really close to rank 4, but he couldn't get it quite yet. 
Might get it though. Reen is now on cooldown. Oof. Um, I think one of the mistakes Rohan did in this game was to lose a lot of Rohirrim. And that's why he was forced to replace the Rohirrim he kept lo losing and couldn't get stuff done. Uh, Legolas can also add a lot of um, advantage to you in this matchup. We'll give you the chance so you can go forward and then, you know, hook strike and do that over and over again to annoy your opponent, to force him into an all-out. Right now, there is only one target for Lourdes, and that's Theorin. You have no Aragorn, you have no Gimli. Also, Gimli can be nice while your army is on the one side of the map. The Gimli... Aragorn and Legolas trio, the monster trio, can be on the other side of the map. They can definitely uh, deal with an Isengard army as long as Eisen has no leadership around or heroes around. That's going to be a full commitment. He has no more warm tongue. Saruman is getting focused. He's going to turn and blast. Will he die though? Will the wizard die? Um, no, Theoden will die in, ex in exchange. Oof, bro, that was so, so unfortunate, so really unfortunate for the King of Rohan. He will get revived another time. Luckily, it's going to only take you 2 minutes and 15 seconds. But 2 minutes and 15 seconds in the RTS game is still quite long. Rohirrim arches are getting shredded over there. Oof, another battalion has been taken down. And uh, you see, that's the strength of Aizen, you know, that the army of Aizen is so strong that you cannot really commit to an all-out fight when there is Saruman and Lourdes nearby and when he has access to the war chant and if that's not enough he can always um, go for... does he have Balrog? Almost. He can always go for the Freezing Rain too. One power point needed. Rohan still needs five power points in total for his EOD. Oof, what a fireball! Ooh, son! Saruman though, using all his powers and spells and might even get away from this location and will get away from the situation. The wizard will not pay to die today, tonight, today, tonight, whenever you are watching this video. Ooh, the Balrog of the ancient world. He's gonna pre fire the gate, so open the gate, you know, and then he can fly inside. Swords are not useless, bro. And unfortunately, you have no wizard that can fight against them. And the army will follow up, go inside, and show what Isengard was truly made of. L Lord accurate, Lord accurate Isengard over there, you know? And the difference between this Isengard and the Isengard in the films was, in the films, Saruman decided to chill at his tower, or Frank. He was just sitting there and chilling, but in this... Game, he decided to participate actively and fight against Rohan. And of course, one of the major differences is that, is that Rohan didn't get any uh, reinforcement summon in this game. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Trust me, Rohan is capable of defeating Isengard. We have seen this a lot. Most of the time are these games, but very, very short. And Rohan can have a great start. It can snowball out of control. But if you want to, if you don't believe me, I can upload also videos in which you will see that Rohan is indeed capable of destroying and defeating any faction in this game, including Isengard. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.